water and sunlight is necessary for a seed to grow and flourish. If a person goes through their life with everything handed to them, then that one little tinge of happiness that they always have is what they'll always have. But if that person has that experience to know what it feels to fall and not know how to get back up, when they finally do get back up, and they are going to thrive and they are going to feel like they can accomplish anything. Identity, um, according to Erickson, very early wrote about this continuous sense of self that people have. So it's this interaction between people and society that kind of comes together and people understand who they are overall. So it's really just an understanding of your continuous sense of self. It's natural for humans to group ourselves. We may group ourselves according to our educational, our educational status, our family background, race, color, nationality, creed, religion. Um, I think a person's identity is um, a compilation of all the factors, environmental factors, and I think genetics and genetic things too. As a scientist, I believe in epigenetic factors, right? So there are things that we're kind of programmed to have and be because of genetics, but then um, I think that those genetics are also shaped by the environment that grew, we grew up in. So I'm adopted, um, half black and half Jewish, genetically, I guess. Um, I was adopted by a single white Jewish mother um, and just raised with her. And I don't know anything about my birth parents other than their ethnicity. And sometimes I feel like I have to speak for, like, I have to speak for all the Jews of color and I have to speak for all the people of color and all the adopted kids because I am one of the only representatives. In my work, I'm really interested in adolescence, racial and ethnic identity. And some young people are aware or they place ethnicity or race or gender central to their identity and other people are not as aware. Um, so for example, um, some young people may have never thought of themselves as a member of a racial or an ethnic group, or some people may have never thought about the differences between, you know, boys and girls. So we would say that they're less self-aware than others. I remember just feeling so liberated. Like after holding my breath for 16 years, the words, I'm adopted, slithered off my lips, and I finally let that air go. The underlying pain that I feel and been through in the past it's what caused me to suppress that reality. I think that parents are certainly one of the first influences that we have. Um, and you can either learn from your parents, that, oh, I, I like the way they do this and the other thing, and I'm gonna do that. Or you learn from your parents like, oh, when my mom gets mad, this is how she handles it. And I wanna be the opposite of that. Um, so I think they play a part, but I, and I think maybe they build a base or give us some roots or plant some seeds that we then take um, and develop on our own through media and through our friends and through our experiences. I don't think that a perfect parent exists. A perfect parent is imperfect. A perfect parent just, I think, is willing to be there, but not to be overly, you know, overly there. A parent can be like the deciding factor of whether or not their child is insecure. It, is, it really shapes them a lot from like from head to toe. Uh, and then it still the values too. When you grow up hearing a certain set of rules, then you feel like that's the right way. Even though my adopted mom is the best provider I could ever have, I was afraid to let her in emotionally. I've had a history of trusting people that only brought me pain and everything that I thought was going to turn out great ended up being terrible. Parents can either set up an environment where um, young people can explore, they can learn about themselves. Um, parents can also place different things in the environment, you know, buying books or listening to different types of music or um, taking their children to museums. So there are direct things that parents can do to kind of foster a young person's sense of self. But they can also just allow more space for young people to explore. I am a laid back parent. I prefer for my kids to learn through experience, but 
in a reasonable sense. Like I, I wouldn't just, you know, put my daughter in a neighborhood where I know there's a lot of sex trafficking or something like that. You know, that would be ridiculous. But at the same time, she's gonna have to learn to experience. Going through that situation made it really hard for me to open up to anybody that's supposed to be my family. Every time somebody came in, they were out just as fast. That's what drove me to cherish the outsiders, the people that aren't supposed to be family. My friends are my second family. They influence you a lot, like, because everyone is their own person, so, you know, maybe you like this quality in this person, so you want to be like this, or this quality in this person, so you want to be like that. So your friends really test you to be who you are, and become the person you want to be instead of being someone else. When you're a teen, especially like 13, 14, you're very, in, like, you become influenced very easily. And if all your friends drinking and smoking and you like these people, your friends are the people that you choose to hang around. So it's some type of characteristic in that person that you like. I remember when I was in high school, the only time I got complimented was when I straightened my hair. So then in my head, I'm like, okay, so that means I'm only pretty when my hair is straight. That's messed up. This took three hours. Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to do this every day. Um, and that really messed with me. Like, that the only way my peers could, you know, like find something to compliment about was if I like conformed to whatever standard. In adolescence, friends or peers are really important for young people because they can reinforce different behaviors and make a young person feel good about themselves. Um, there's tons of research that suggests that um, isolation or not having friends is really problematic for young people. So it's really important for adolescents to have friends. Um, sense of community is really just kind of a basic human need, so it's really important for young people to connect with other people like them. I realized that the identity I have at home with my adopted mom is different than who I am at school with friends. At home, I try to create the illusion that I'm perfect, but at school, everyone accepts and acknowledges the fact that we're not. In life, it's not about the family you were born into. It's about the family you create along the way. Well, for young people, you know, once they leave their parents' home, school, I, I guess, is the next socializing agent. So um, school, you know, the setting of schools, but also people within the schools. So teachers play a huge role in shaping your identity as well. Teachers definitely, they make a big impact on you because not only are they giving you a grade, but it's an adult giving you kind of validation for what you're thinking and feeling. And it's another adult that doesn't have to care about you, but they do anyway, if they're good, you know. I understand now that it's not about being perfect. Nobody's perfect. But the only thing that we can do is try to be the best that we can be. If I had to say a perfect child, again, I would say someone who's self-aware and reflective and um, makes choices out of that consciousness who pursues healthy relationship with everyone around him. So I already know that the textbook answer is there is no such thing as a perfect child. <laughs> but to me, I think a perfect child is a happy child. A teen maturing is, it never really stops. I think that teen just puts a label, like aging and stuff like that. But I think that each day you grow and learn something, like you don't stop learning, like you don't stop growing and maturing. Things like that, because you got, you got old people who act goofy and crazy like young people, so. I've talked to so many students throughout the years, and I hear about so many family situations. It's really important for adults to be adults and to take care of you guys um, so you can be all that you're supposed to be. Things happen to people, you know, that change them or keep them from being able to be great parents, but um, for as much as depends upon you and for all that's within you, do your best to to help a young person to attain the fullness of who they are. It's important. All adults have been teenagers. All young children will become teenagers and all teenagers will become adults. The cycle never ends. We all grow and develop and many of us will endure the same hindering obstacles and struggles. But that does not mean that we can't or won't bounce back.